Hey guys! So today you and I are going to talk about documentation. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I want to hear your insights in on this. I have I've been uh, assigned to prepare documentation of the system, both technical and user guide. So how? So we have a plan to prepare first a checklist of the documentation, then templates, so we could reuse it in other systems. Uh, so what is your checklist in documentation preparation, and other, any other things to consider? Maybe tools, example, and uh, etc. Right. Uh, so. Usually when I deal with documentation, I only th consider three things to start off with because uh, the like there are many many tools that you can use but I've always found that the problem with documentation isn't the tooling. The tooling is easy. The problem with documentation is that most people don't know how to maintain it well and most people don't fundamentally know how to write documentation for other people because it is it, writing good documentation is in essence the same thing as being a good teacher, in my opinion. Good documentation is intended to ref, uh, to relay understanding of something to help you. Either I, I usually say that there are uh, two types that I usually work with. Either you have a guide of some sort, and the guide is usually something a, a piece of information that just helps you go and execute a specific task. It tells you how to do something. And then you have overviews or that are intended for you to just understand higher concepts within whatever you're dealing with. So as you can imagine, like for us software developers, the best analogy, to, uh, best examples of this would be a guide is a tutorial, basically. So when you learn how to do something in your favorite programming language or so forth, usually these uh, medium articles and so forth, they're designed as guides. Like they show you step by step. First, we do, we're doing this, and then you, they usually have some code examples or imagery or videos or something like that, and they take you step by step through the whole thing. These are the most common guide documentation pieces of documentation that I write uh, because they are usually the most common when it comes to internal documentation not just internal, it's also of course user guides and so forth. If you're making product guides for users, it, the same sort of thing applies because you need to sort of, well, you need to execute certain tasks and you may not be super interested at that point in the overview where you need to learn like the big concepts. In that scenario, you only care about executing your task. So that's one type of documentation. The other type of documentation is the overview where it's you, what you're trying to understand is what is this thing offering me? What is the system? What is this? What are the terms? What are, what's the domain that I'm dealing with? And those sort of overviews are usually the sort of thing that you create for high level stakeholders, people who just want to figure out what your system is all about. It's the, it's the pitch. It's the introduction. It's the, CEO presentation. It's the stuff that just uh, that uh, makes people understand. Okay, what are we dealing with, and how does the system at at like at the, at a high level actually work? And you want to divide those two things. You never want to mix them because it really is important, as I was saying, to think like a teacher here. Because if you are trying to, it, there's a very big difference between show, having an introduction course, like a crash course, to a a bunch of the high level concepts so people sort of understand what they're going to do and teaching them hands on how to do a specific thing. If you mix those things, you're going to annoy people. If you get too technical and detailed in your overview, people are just going to stop reading because they're not there to like figure out exactly how some little pe like you don't want to get into the details there. You want to just keep it high level so it's easy to digest. But at the same time, you when people are focusing on a specific thing, they want to quickly as possible get to gratification. They want to execute a task as quickly as possible. You don't want to like to arrive go away from that they just want step by step like how do i do this as quickly as possible what do i need to do and feel like they know uh, how to like uh, feel like they're progressing very quickly towards their goal these are the two types of documentation that you want to start thinking about how to divide those two and how to structure them accordingly always keep focus on the type of thing that you are making number two how searchable is it i always look at that 
documentation that you can find is documentation that is useless. So what I usually do here is that I think about my documentation a little bit like how you would think about a, your product. You will have an entry point somewhere. Usually you have some landing page or you know your program has an entry point like a main function or something like that. It, that's the start point. From there you should be able to find the information that you are looking for regardless of who you are and then you should also consider the non like this is not just you go to the uh, the login page or the main page you have some type of search functionality so for an example uh, when i write documentation for internal use where for, for the developers and so forth i usually have a readme file in the root of the folder which is pretty much every i know that every software developer will be that will be the first place they are going to check for documentation and in that in that single file like i usually uh, which is the last thing we're going to touch about like how do you structure documentation uh, i have links to say I know the first thing is usually the onboarding guide because most people want to know how do you start a project the second thing is all right who do I contact if I don't really know what to do etc etc the details that I need to know in order to progress because as I said I have a focus on what are they doing are they trying to understand the system as a whole or are they trying to understand like just execute on a specific task or something like that and then I try to, uh, when I structure documentation, I try to structure it with the jargon and terminology that is common for the domain. It's a bit like domain-driven design, because when people start searching, when they're not just going to your login or to your main page or your documentation, like uh, uh, they, they're going to try to search for information. You can think of it as when you're searching on Google or something like that, how to write regex, how to, uh, I don't know, call and run this curl command or whatever you're doing right you're basically trying to describe what you're trying to do so you as the writer of the documentation especially when it comes to writing guides and stuff like that you should try to mirror what then really understand what type of person what, what type of uh, problem is the reader going to have and is it likely that if you structure your naming of say your documents or the t articles that you write in a good way will they will it match because if you do fussy searching or like depending on what type of searching you're going to do like some searches are very advanced some are less advanced but it's all down to the terminology you're using so make sure that you understand how people are very, without an in-depth understanding of what they're looking for would try to express what they're trying to find third and lastly Make sure that uh, I, I basically have a strategy for how to keep your documentation relevant. Uh, usually I say that if your documentation is out of date, like it's not relevant anymore, or it lacks focus, it's not going to be used. It's just going to be like, there you go, you, people are going to shortcut it and try to f uh, either be very frustrated or like ask you, it's the same thing you do when you go and try to figure out how to a certain framework or something like that uh, works and the documentation is super bad and instead of like you don't, you don't get instant gratification right so what do you do you start trying shit out in the code and see if you can figure it out without having to read the whole damn thing that's why i'm a big advocate of saying create small like i usually put all my documentation in markdown files in the repository because that gives me version control it gives me the shortest time to update the documentation and then i usually have like if it's public documentation i publish that information because markdown is a usually universally supported format for basically any tool you would like to use if it's docker source or if it's uh, like Confluence or if it's um, Jira or whatever you I don't know you can use all kinds of uh, Notion there's so many different uh, platforms that you can pick basically any one uh, any one of them or you can do self-hosting and so forth you can always basically support Markdown and that becomes your reference documentation you can make it more advanced than that but that means that this is the easiest way for you to keep things up to date without a lot of extra work and it versions controls as well which is as I said very very powerful now when you have that in place try to write your documentations as I said small and focused because if you have a really large piece of information and you just duplicate information over and over that's not good try to keep the thing that you're doing crisp that's like with a guide don't make it a necessarily a very really large guide try to understand what they're trying to do write a single document that might just be like a few like 50 lines of text or whatever that really focuses on the thing that they're trying to do and link to it 
that creates a modularity where it's easier for you to link to things that are duplicates than it is for you to maintain duplicate. It's basically like a code structure. If you duplicate this information, you're going to have to keep it updated in many files at the same time. So it's better for you to create smaller pieces of documentation and link to those articles than it is for you to write really, really big things. And then be very careful with videos, for example, because video it sounds great and it can be great. But the problem with that is that just with Im images, if you have a picture of something and you update the interfaces, now you have to go and update it. So the maintainability of the documentation is very important because if it's hard to maintain, it's going to stop being maintained and then it doesn't have any value anymore. That brings us to the last point I will give you make sure that you have an on and a rotation of maintaining the documentation just as you do with code reviews i have a monthly rotation with my teams usually for internal stuff at the very least which basically means that we have a reoccurring task where every month a new person gets to review the documentation and they go through all the links all the information and like check it and so forth this is a really good way for them to also learn how to do things in the system because they are not going to know everything and reading the documentation and forcing them to do that and review and being responsible for that it's accurate forces them to ask questions and learn more about the system and then when they're done we create a pull request uh, where they put they put their name just as you would see on McDonald's or a restaurant who's in the bathroom they write their name and the date when they last cleaned in this case its documentation so that whoever reads this document can see that oh uh, Jane or John or whoever he has uh, he or she has uh, checked this and it was like last week or something like that this is probably still very uh, relevant and it also gives you a sort of an indicator of okay who are ma the maintainers of this how do I talk to these people how do I get in contact with them so because they probably know more about this stuff uh, if you're uncertain about if the documentation is correct or not so what I want you to take away from this is that I have three things that I usually do for documentation, both publicly and internally. Number one is what type of doc, of, know what, who you're writing it for. Is it a guide where you go step by step and you want to help them execute a task? Or are you trying to give them an introduction to a bigger concept, like higher level things? It's all about understand, being that teacher. What type of course are they taking? Is it an introduction where you try to get them excited or you try to get them to understand at a high level what things uh, about things? Or is it a technical thing where you really want to show them with examples, step by step, how to use an API, use a feature, use something like that? Because you structure things differently when you do that. Number two is how searchable is it? Do you have an idea of how do people usually find their docs? Are they searching for a specific thing that they want to do? Or are they just going to a logging page or like a, 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 a landing page and just want to get some type of introduction? You place your breadcrumbs of finding documentation in different places depending on what type of person you're dealing with. So you need to understand what needs they have. And making things searchable is as easy as making sure that your art, your titles and the articles refer to the same jargon you would expect someone to look for when they're not 100% sure how things work. Just as we try yourself, when you search for things on Google or Stack Overflow or something like that or any documentation, how do you usually express yourself? Try to match that because that makes things easy to find. Third and lastly, make sure that, it is, that your documentation is relevant. In other words, it has to be easy to maintain. The more fancy tools and like shit, the extra overhead you add to it, the more less likely you are to miss the fa fundamental thing, which is that it has to be re reviewed on a regular basis, it has to be accurate, and it has to be easy to change. Because if it is uh, difficult for you to do this, it's just going to fall, fall together. So try to write smaller articles that really focus on the thing that the person is trying to do, link to those. That that means them they become more reusable and you're less likely to duplicate things and keep things uh, than if you have really big documents. Be careful with images and like you should always use imagery and illustrations and so forth but just make sure that they are also up to date. Videos, long videos especially are difficult because things change and all of a sudden it doesn't reflect the reality anymore. So think about that. Last, lastly, make sure that you have a reviewing process and I usually include the team in that because the more people that know all the pieces of the documentation, the more likely you are that that gives benefits to the entire team and if you put your name or like some reviewing process in place, especially if you have it in the repo, you get version control, you get code reviews and you get some type of indicator of how relevant this information is. That's very difficult if you have just like uploaded everything to a thing 
like conference or so forth. That's why I tell people try to always keep a version control version of your doc your, your source documentation, just as you do with translation. You have a master language file somewhere that it should ideally be version controlled uh, and easy to change so that you can port it to other platforms. Have a great day.